Hello and welcome, Scott Smith here with Aspen Avionics. We're going to cover the brand new Aspen Evolution 2500 system today. Our flight's going to originate in Venice, Florida, and our destination will be Kissimmee, Florida. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride. This overview will include how to use your system from the beginning of a flight to the end of a flight, and we'll include an approach in there as well. Runway two, three, calm wind runway. One of the first things you're going to do after letting the GPS navigator lock on the satellites is put in your flight plan. And once you do that, you'll see how the flight plan is overlaid on your HSI with your bearing and your distance to your next waypoint. You'll also see it overlaid on your moving map. So here we're getting ready to taxi on to the runway and notice how I have my screens configured for takeoff. So on the left hand screen, I like having the angle of attack um, at the bottom portion. So I get a nice big indicator and then I've got my terrain and traffic up top so I can see if I'm going to run into anybody or anything. Notice your AO ind indicator. It comes alive with uh, two chevrons, uh, your bottom chevron is your dirty configuration or gear and flaps down and your top chevron is the clean configuration or gear and flaps up. Take a look at the synthetic vision and watch as the runway passes underneath you. Also note the targets that are out in front of you. In this case I'm using the ADS-B in source so I can see the other traffic around me and it labels the targets above or below the horizon in relationship to your altitude. Notice the yellow towers as we depart out and their relationship to you, giving you an idea of what uh, obstructions are around you. I'm also going to go ahead and hit the direct to an enter key on my GPS, which will center up our course line and bring a line from our position to our destination. Also note the traffic targets and their altitude above or below you is labeled based off a plus or a minus sign. Once I get up to altitude, I like to set up one of my MFDs in a north up position so I can see where I am to my destination. Notice that I dial in the altitude at 7,500 feet here and it's gonna show my climb and descent arc in both my HSI and my MFDs. So it makes it nice to see where you're gonna be at when you cross that altitude. I use it to go under or over airspace. I'll also use it uh, for my destination airport as I'm coming in, I'll put that altitude a thousand feet above the uh, air, airport for the traffic pattern. Let's take a look at the METAR flags that we've added on the moving map with the MAXs. And they're color coded based off of the reporting points. So marginal or VFR, IFR, low IFR. Note the trend line on your altimeter tape as you're climbing or descending. It tells you where, where you're going to be at in six seconds. So it's a really nice tool as you're leveling off. Let's take a look at the approach plate and how to utilize that. So the approach plate will only come up in a full screen. And as you select your approach plate, you can choose destination, nearest, or departure point. In this case, I'm bringing up Kissimmee and I'm gonna bring up the uh, approach for as I'm reviewing the approach plate, I get all the information, including your beginning altitude, your letdown fixes, and of course your final altitude, MDA um, or DA, depending on the approach. So what I'll do is I'll set my altitude to my beginning altitude on that approach, which in this case, is 2,000 feet. 
I'll also look at the minimums and go ahead and set those based off the approach plate. So hit the minimums key and dial in the minimums. Now it only goes in 10 foot increments. So in this case, I'm gonna round it up to 340, 340 feet and get ready to shoot the approach. I'll also go ahead and review the misapproach procedure while I'm reviewing the approach plate. So I'll go ahead and load the approach on my GPS. Once I load that approach, it's gonna overlay it on my MFD, which makes it really nice for situational awareness. Because even though I'm still navigating to the airport, I haven't been cleared yet for the approach, I still have the approach overlaid on that moving map on the MFD. So it makes it really nice for situational awareness. And I can run my cursor up here and I can see, you know, my bearing, my distance, my ETA to that spot. While we have a few moments here, I want to go through the METARs, AirMed Sigmunds, TFRs, Winsloft, all the information you're getting basically from ADSBN. We have a dedicated page for that. And so while you're here, you can go through and select the different products. So you got your uh, convective, which is your next rad, your airment segments, uh, TFRs, winds and temps aloft. When I'm on my winds and temps aloft, I can bring uh, altitude up and down by pressing on the uh, flight level plus and minus. And it's gonna give me the wind direction, uh, speed, and also the temps. When I go over to my METAR, page, I can bring up the different uh, METAR flags, highlight them, push in on the knob, and it's going to bring me the actual METAR for that reporting point. And I can look at the uh, um, observation, the current one, and also the previous observation. And so I can get an idea of the trend of the weather, whether it's getting um, um, dissipating or uh, increasing uh, in intensity there. All right, let's get back on the approach. So as we're coming down, again, you're gonna have your uh, climb and descent arc, and that just verifies you're gonna be at that uh, fix by the altitude that you've dialed in. And again, there's the arc as we're coming in for the approach. Um, we can see that we're you know, going down 600 and uh, some odd feet per minute there. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this up. I like putting my uh, train and traffic in on the uh, one of the MFDs so I can see if I'm running anything or anybody. And man, look at all of the metal in the sky out there. It's coming into Orlando area, so obviously there's gonna be a lot of traffic. We also label the in numbers on the aircraft, um, as well as their altitude above or below you. So let's take a look at the timers page. I'm using this uh, for my two minutes per two inches of manifold pressure on my cool down for my turbo. So I'm gonna bring it back from 30 inches to 28 inches and go ahead and start that timer. And what's nice is I can go and do something else after I've set that timer because I'm gonna get the audio call out that actually says timer. I'm gonna go ahead and set up my number two timer and I've got three minutes preset in there and that's my cool down after I land. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that done as I'm coming in just to, just to have it ready to start once I uh, touch down. So as I get ready to start this approach, I like getting my uh, MFD set up to uh, the AOA page on the bottom, and then I'll have traffic and terrain on top. Again, uh, nice big fat indicator on the AOA. So my timer's expired. I can go ahead and pull uh, another couple inches off the engine, and I'll restart that timer.
here's a good example of what the timer callout sounds like. Timer. Some of the new navigators have a visual approach option, and I want to show you how we labeled that and the uh, three mile fix, which is uh, pretty slick. All right, let's get ready for the approach. So ATC calls up and gives us a heading to fly. We're gonna reach up on the uh, heading bug and dial that heading in. And notice you get a breadcrumb trail from the aircraft symbol to the heading bug itself. Um, go ahead and turn GPSS off, and that way the autopilot is gonna turn to the heading that you've dialed in. In this case, I, I dialed in a 068. Um, so the aircraft's gonna turn to the right and also reach over on your GPS and activate the approach. Once you do that, it's going to turn magenta on the, uh, on the course line for the approach and the inbound uh, course is gonna set on your HSI. So notice that we get the glide slope here and the localizer here. Um, we also have minimum set. So as we're coming down the glide slope here, you're gonna see a couple chevrons on the altimeter tape. The green one there is 500 foot from minimums and the yellow one is 100 feet from minimums. So a couple of really key and very cool things are getting ready to happen here. You're gonna get a voice alert as you approach minimums. Approaching minimums. And then you get another voice alert when you hit minimums. Minimums. Which makes it very easy to decipher when you're at minimums. I went ahead and turned synthetic vision on the MFD here so you can see what it looks like as you're coming in to land. Take a look at the AOA on the left hand side. Notice how the bottom chevron, which is the uh, dirty configuration gear and flaps down, as the aircraft shutters there, uh, the AOA indicator is right at that uh, yellow and black chevron, right at stall. So as we roll out here, notice the intersecting runways on the right hand MFD. You'll see that uh, as we're coming up here on that. Um, also, you can still see some traffic out there in front of you, but once we get below 30 knots here, the airport diagrams automatically gonna pop up on that uh, right hand MFD and show you where you are. It happened right, right here. And again, the unparalleled situational awareness. You can see exactly where you are. And they said uh, taxi um, on taxiway Bravo. So we see Bravo there as we turn right. And we're gonna taxi in here to the FBO and shut her down. I'm gonna go back to my timers page here and start my three minute timer to cool my turbos down, make sure I uh, do that cool down before uh, shutting the aircraft down. This concludes our successful flight using the new Aspen Avionics Max 2500 system. Reach out to your uh, local avionics shop for a quote. Also visit our website, aspenavionics.com, for more information. You can also feel free to call us or uh, email us uh, with any questions. Thank you again for your time and have a great day.